Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today I have a family portrait video and it's going to be on a couple houses that um, I've shown you some bottles from time to time, but I recently acquired uh, a new bottle that completed one of the lines um, within this brand that I've been kind of collecting. And I thought it might be worth just doing a quick family portrait so we could kind of talk about it. There, there are two houses that um, I really like, but I consider both houses to be under the under the radar. Not really under the radar, but maybe not talked about as much as they should be. Um, and the two houses are going to be Lalique and Montana, okay? Um, now, before we jump into it, uh, I do want to do scent of the day uh, because it's coming down to the end of the cold season for some. Actually, uh, here in Texas, tomorrow it's going to be in the 70s Fahrenheit, and then later on in the week it's going to be in the 80s, and it's not even March 1st yet. So I'm kind of winding down some of the end of my um, winter perfumes, if you will, and I wanted to give this a full wear before the season was over, and that is a fragrance by the House of Diptyque, and it's called Volutes. Take a look at the uh, beautiful artwork on the front with the ship. The smoke almost looks like a, um, you know, a person built into the smoke or a butterfly, you know, a person with wings. And then on the back, the, the trend kind of continues with the waves um, parting the boat coming towards shore. Beautiful uh, presentation. This is a tester bottle, as you can see, that I scored. And I want to say that the... EDT is unfortunately discontinued. Um, I don't know for sure. If anyone knows for sure, let me know. Um, but basically what this is, is this is this honey, a popinax, uh, which is basically another word for sweet myrrh. It's a sweetened type of myrrh with cinnamon and iris and tobacco and hay and dried fruits. And if that note listing sounds familiar, it's because there's a fragrance that used to be a big time hype beast in the community known as uh, Cher Guy. And uh, Serge Luton's Cher Guy, um, I would actually say Cher Guy is a step up as far as, um, you know, composition and quality. And it also gets points for being first. This came out in 2012. And I want to say Shergi came out um, many years before this. I don't know the exact date Shergi came out, but it's been but it's been a while. Um, and but if you're a tobacco lover and you can stand somewhat sweet fragrances, see for me, I don't usually like sweet fragrances, but in some fragrances where the composition is done very well, I can take it. And so here, this is one that um, I can take the sweetness. Um, this is a little 50 ml bottle, and so, you know, something like this for my collection is perfect. You can see I've put a very small dent into it, um, and I'll be wearing this for years to come, but um, the thing about Diptyque's fragrances is, even though it's a niche house, some of their fragrances smell very synthetic, um, and that might turn some people off, but for whatever reason, for me, it doesn't turn me off. I actually, um, I find the way that they do their fragrances um, very appealing, even though they're synthetic, if that makes sense. It almost seems like the two ideas don't go together. Like, I shouldn't like a synthetic, a fragrance that has a synthetic composition to it, especially for a niche house where it's more expensive. Um, I've said this before, but the way to tell EDT versus EDP is the label. That's the easiest way. If it's EDT, the label will be white. And if it's EDP, it will actually be black. I already did a family portrait on my Diptyque fragrances. So if you want to go watch that video, it's a couple videos back. You can go see it. Um, but beautiful composition, especially if you're a tobacco lover like I am, um, and honey lover like I am. Um, Volutes is one to put on the list. I like the EDT 
I think a little bit more just because it has a little bit more room to breathe, although I feel like most people would maybe veer towards the EDP. Okay, so that's my scent of the day. Now let's talk about these houses. Um, and these two, for me anyways, were fan... A lot of these fragrances are great value for money. If you're kind of somebody who is very turned off by what you see going on with, uh, you know, houses like Roja um, or some of the other very expensive houses that even some of the houses that maybe aren't as expensive as Roja, but still expensive like MFK. I mean, you're talking hundreds, if not thousand dollars for some of those bottles, plus for some houses like, you know, Roja and some of those more expensive houses. Um, these are the fragrances that you should start. And if you're starting a collection, if you're somebody who's newer to the perfume game, the best way to really get your collection going is to start collecting these type of fragrances. And in fact, I would almost recommend starting with some of these in this in this line that I'll show you. So the first one is going to be Ancre Noir, the original. And I had a big hole in my collection. If you go look at my, this is not a top 10 vetiver fragrance video that I did, within the last couple weeks, you'll notice that this was not there, and that's because I just received it about a week ago. And I wore it to bed the other day, and it absolutely blew me away, way more than when I first wore it. The first time I wore it, <clears throat> I thought I preferred the Alextrem and the Sport over this, even. And so that was year many years ago. Um, I thought, mm, this is too... You know, Ancre Noir basically translates to um, black ink. Uh, Ancre Noir. Uh, ink black, I guess, is what it translates to. And um, Nathalie Lorson, who's one of the queens of budget fragrances, if you will, you give her a $30 fragrance and she can turn it into something amazing. Well, actually, that's not fair because this is actually a $100 fragrance at retail, but no one pays retail because you can just get them from... Fragrance X, Fragrance Net, um, all that good stuff. Uh, for this, I paid thirty dollars for this hundred ml with free shipping. Um, and this is obviously it must be a newer formulation. I doubt it's some sort of vintage or anything. This is a two thousand and um, this is a two thousand and six release. Okay. And actually, before I really get into the notes on Ancre Noir, I just want to read you a little bit about the house of, of Lalique because Lalique, um, technically their fragrance business was launched by uh, Marie-Claude Lalique in 1992. So they're only celebrating um, their 30-year perfume anniversary, if you will. Um, but their story actually goes way back beyond that because there was a man born in the, uh, year 1860 named René Lalique, and he basically wanted to be like a jewelry designer. Um, and so he started to come up with all these designs and he started to get a little bit of traction. He implemented some ideas, um, but the success that he had in, in jewelry design uh, basically was well overshadowed by the success that he had creating bottles. That that was Lalique's business model for many a years. They were not perfumers um, because he was the next door neighbor of a perfumer and businessman himself, you may have heard of, named Francois Coty. And Coty created the first sheaf fragrance, okay? And um, so they were actually neighbors. And so their um, their business and professional and friend and personal friendship, um, you know, really uh, ended up suiting both men. It, hel it helped. It, both people hadn't had a, uh, a lot to gain from that partnership. Lalique could fill his beautiful bottles with Coty's creation. And Coty had a reliable bottle of distributor, and pretty soon he started manufacturing perfumes for Roger and Galay, D'Orsay, Molinard, you know, and they and they were like beautiful works of art. I mean, some of the old bottles, if you go see some of the beautiful compositions um, that Lalique created, um, 
you know, all kind of all kinds of firsts in the industry. Lalique is like the 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 flagship name in in perfume bottling. You know, crystal baccarat crystal glass that they use to create the bottle. All all kind of stuff that they did. Beautiful flacons, right? And so they decided in 1992 to start launching their perf their actual perfume business. And um, um, there are some real gems in this line that you can get for the uh, for e even for somebody like me who has hundreds and hundreds of bottles. These are uh, staples in my collection. This is an absolute perfect fragrance to wear um, when it's raining, something like that. Uh, vetiver as a scent is also a very austere scent. So what Nathalie Lorson did is she used vetiverial acetate, which is a um, distillation of vetiver in some form. I've said this before, but Euro Rose sent me a picture of a perfumer's organ from the late 70s, I believe it was, maybe early 80s, but in that time frame. And vetiviral acetate was the number one um, ingredient used by perfumers who use that organ, so to speak. It was the, it was right at the top. Um, and so what she did is she took this common vetiver material, mixed it with cypress. Okay, so it, it comes off green. And then she also mixed in bourbon vetiver and Haitian vetiver. Okay, so Haitian vetiver is kind of like the clean vetiver. But then you get this a little bit more darkness from the bourbon vetiver. Um, it is, you know, brings in this really rooty, really damp, really brooding um, scent. Very austere. I actually love this fragrance now. The first time I smelled it, I think it was just too much for me. I mean, I literally just, I think my brain just short-circuited. Um, there is this... I, I detect some of Nathalie Lorson's uh, very, very, uh, almost like a patented DNA of her designs, which there's this peppery musk. She does very well. Um, and you take this very dark, you know, vetiver is such a beautiful material. It could almost be a perfume in and of itself. And these Lalique fragrances are probably the closest thing that I've ever smelled to true vetiver absolute. And that's why I like them so much. Um, it's not for everybody. I mean, if you're somebody who wants to wear Baccarat Rouge 540 or something, you know, like that, that's sweet and, and more mass appealing or whatever it may be, you might smell this and, and be put off. But if you're big into perfume, if you really want to understand perfume and you want to understand the notes and you want to study the history and you want to do all these kind of things, this is a must in a collection, and it was a huge hole in my collection, and I'm so glad to have it filled. Um, I will definitely be wearing this on rainy spring days. It's so gorgeous. Um, I used to say that this was my least favorite of the Ancre Noir series. Now, I don't know anymore, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I am torn as to how I would rank this now that I've re that I've rediscovered this and, and kind of fallen in love with it. Okay, now we're gonna go on to a flanker that came out in 2013 and also a Nathalie Lorson composition. And what they've done is they've brightened this up with Ancre Noir Sport. And this is almost like um, Ancre Noir Sport. If you've smelled Ancre Noir, you will know that Ancre Noir Sport smells like something that should, or sounds like something that should not exist. How can they make a sport fragrance of Ancre Noir, right? It makes no sense, zero sense. Um, and so basically what they did is they took citruses like grapefruit and bergamot and lavender. Well, lavender is not a citrus, but you get it here. Provincial lavender, whatever that means. And they've mixed it with this... Um, spiciness of nutmeg uh, and cashmere, cashmere woods, with still keeping her musk, her peppery musk, but maybe toning it down a little bit. This is the, especially in the opening, it smells much fresher because of the, um, it smells much fresher because of the citruses at the top, and then that lavender, and then there are some aquatic notes, but if you're someone like me that normally shies away from real aquatic fragrances, like I don't own Aqua de Jo or anything like that, still test this because 
I love wearing this in the summer. As far as like a clean vetiver goes, this and um, Creed's original vetiver are two of my favorite summer vetivers to wear. This is just absolutely beautiful. Um, and if I didn't smell it myself and let my nose make the distinction, if I didn't actually give myself a chance on this one, I probably would have skipped it. Honestly, because I, aquatic notes, vetiver, uh, not really my thing, but such a beautiful composition. And this is where, as you, as you continue to develop your um, fragrance portfolio, if you will, um, you know, you're going to have to make these kind of decisions. Do I add it or do I not add it, right, to the collection? And... You have to you have to let your own nose make that distinction, and you also have to learn that in the fragrance game, sometimes price and smell and what you get out of a fragrance are not connected. This I paid twenty five dollars for this hundred ml bottle. You can see I've made a little bit of a dent, um, but twenty five dollars. For a hundred ml, you would think it is going to be a shite fragrance. It's going to be crap. It's going to be, you know, bottom of the barrel. It's not. This is one of the best, all of these in the Ancre Noir line. You can't go wrong if you're a vetiver lover. And I used to think that I did not like the note of vetiver, but I bought these to have it as a, um, you know, like as a, as, a, as a piece to kind of focus on, as a study manual, if you will, to vetiver. And I've kind of fallen in love with all three of these. They're some of the best vetiver fragrances you can buy for the money. You know, you can go buy $500 Roja's Vetiver if you want, but it's a vetiver. It's a vetiver fragrance. I mean, it's, it's, vetiver, by the way, is a note that cannot be recreated in a lab. So all vetiver you smell, even in the $25 bottle like this, is real, um, is real vetiver. So, you know, for me, amazing composition and uh, deserves... You know, this kind of gets put to the back burner. No one talks about it anymore, but um, I love this entire line. And rediscovering the original was a um, was was a real boon for me. That was a that was a big discovery, and I'm so glad to have it. Now I'll show you the one that I put the biggest dent in, the one that I love and wear the most. And before getting the original Ancre Noir and it hitting me just how beautiful that dark deep inky vetiver note is I would I would have said this is my favorite I still think it's my favorite um but boy the original Ancre Noir really took me back um this is Ancre Noir Al Extreme look at the dent I put in this one um now this is a 2015 release this you might have to pay a little bit over $30 for on the secondary market but so what um this is that same uh, Haitian and Haitian vetiver. <sighs> God, I love this vetiver so much. But what they've done, so they kept some of the citruses, okay, from from the sport. Um, but they've they've removed the grapefruit. They kept the bergamot. They added elemi, which almost gives off like this olibanum type feel, but. Um, maybe a little bit more refined, a little bit more scaled back from real, from, from the oily olibanum. So they've added elemi, they kept the cypress, they uh, have iris here, which I love iris in a composition, and they've added um, java vetiver, which Javanese vetiver grows next to a um, active volcano, and that volcano has erupted over the years, and so you get this um, you get this ash, this, this soot that kind of goes into the soil and mixes in over the years and the vetiver comes out real smoky, you know, woody and smoky and deep and dark. I love Java vetiver. It maybe is my favorite type of vetiver. Um, and then there's, fr there's real frankincense in here. So it mixes with the LME. Frankincense and LME just play off of each other beautifully. And then there's benzoin. So it kind of has that you know, Nathalie Lorson is a master at using benzoin. She made uh, Bentley Ferment uh, Intense, uh, which is this, you know, um, uh, this boozy uh, benzoin, ambery thing. And then there's patchouli and sandalwood in the base. 
such a beautiful composition. I'll tell you what, in the winter, um, this right here, if you wanted to say you could do like, you could do summer and you could do winter and you could probably do any time you wanted on this, but rainy days and, and you would be set. If you're a vetiver lover, if you're somebody who doesn't play around, you don't want uh, to have a playful side of your fragrances, you want to get straight to the point, you want people to listen when you talk, you know, um, this. these are the kind of fragrances, this line, uh, these are the kind of fragrances that you should wear. If you're a very, um, very straightforward, no nonsense, you know, just the facts kind of guy, this is it. And it's gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. I need to wear this more. Um, that's the problem with the big collection is you have to kind of try to wear as much of it as you can. But my scent of the day is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a different line from Lalique. It's the Homage line, and there's an original and there's a flanker that I'm going to show you. So we're going to go back in time to 2011. And this is a fragrance created by Christine Nagel and Mathilde Bijou. And they created this fragrance before Christine Nagel became the um, in-house perfumer of um, Hermes. And um, they created this in 2011. And it's called Hommage à l'Homme. Beautiful um, bottle. And it's front and back, by the way. It almost looks like some sort of strange tesseract to me, like it's coming out of the fourth dimension. Do, 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 do. Um, and you've got the Lalique symbol on the top. And um, this came out in 2011. I have a body wash to go with this as well. And um, this fragrance is basically a very clean westernized oud. Now you have to remember, a decade ago, oud was all the rage. If you didn't have an oud perfume in your uh, repertoire, you were, you know, left behind. Everyone was making oud fragrances back then. Just like everyone all of a sudden started making blue ambroxan fragrances five, six years after this, everyone was making oud fragrances back then. But what Lalique did is they created this oud with saffron, which is a very common Middle Eastern perfume note, but they didn't make an oud, oud rose. So I have to give that to them. They did not make an, a rose oud. They made a um, violet leaf. So this fragrance has violet leaf, saffron, bergamot in the top. In the heart, there's pimento leaf, black pepper, and more violet. So again, I've told you in previous videos that Euro Rose was telling me that um, to give off that ozonic violet leaf accord, it's it's different doses of that violet um, material. So if you dose it one way, it smells kind of like violets. If you dose it another, it smells like violet leaves. And this has this very clean westernized oud in the base with cystus uh, and musk. And the cystus gives off... It gives off this... Um, sticky, you know, almost like the sticky resin in the base, but it mixes with the very clean oud, and the oud here just acts kind of as a fixative, as a base. You know, most people aren't going to smell this and go, oh my god, that's a stinky oud, that's a barnyard oud, that's a, no, I mean, this is probably, again, probably, if Lalique, if, if Lalique is using real oud in this, you know, please correct me if I'm wrong. But my guess is, is that they're probably using the same synthetic oud that 99.9% .9 of the companies are using. Um, and But they, this is done very well. This is very clean. This is one of these, you know, you would consider it like, um, I don't know, probably Fragrantica would call it like a spicy woody scent or something. Uh, because it does have that peppery, violet, you know, leaf accord but it has a, a, a slight nod to the Middle East with the oud and saffron and cystus labdanum and stuff like that. Um, but very clean, very professional, very easy. Again, easily could be a signature scent. Um, and so as a work scent or something, these are very austere fragrances that I'm showing you so far. I mean, these are not playful. They're not... Um, you know, go party, go to the club, 
you know, could you get a compliment on some of this stuff? Maybe. I mean, if some, if a girl compliments you on Ancre Noir, watch out. Um, but, you know, this, this is probably for somebody who's maybe a little bit older, already has their profession, their job, their group of professional friends that they, you know, know and work with. There's the batch code right there. So, you know, that's the kind of fragrance that these are, but they're very well done. You don't have to pay thousands of dollars to buy a Roja or, you know, MFK or, or something like that to get a high quality scent. Um, I don't know if this is still being offered or not. I don't see it around very often, and I definitely don't see very many people talking about it, but I love the House of Lalique. I love their offerings. I think um, Bang for Your Buck from this house is through the through the roof, you know. What you get for what you pay with the House of Lalique is one of the best value for money ratios out there. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the flanker, and the flanker is also called Homage Alone, but it's called Voyager, and it comes in this blue bottle, also double-sided, same bottle, but they've tinted the glass blue, and you get the cap, the, um, little plaque here on the front and this came out in uh, 2000 and when did this come out 2014 so this is three years after sorry you just might not be able to see the bottom um 2014 this is a 70 this is a 50 ml bottle that's a hundred this one's 100 and this is a 50. This is the baby. And um, this was created by Michel Almarac and Mylene Alran, which I don't know who that second perfumer is. But Michel Almarac is an absolute legend. And basically what they've done here is they've amped up a couple notes. They've amped up the vetiver papyrus combo which again, um, completely uh, different type of vetiver at used versus the Ancre Noir series, but they give off a very similar vibe, a dark, you know, brooding. Papyrus, get, papyrus gives off that vibe to me anyways. Um, and then there's uh, a big cardamom dose here, so it's spicy, uh, and there's vanilla in the base. My wife actually really likes this fragrance. She told me when I wore it a week or two ago that uh, when I made this my scent of the day, she said she really likes this and she hardly ever says that. And I was very shocked too, because this is not a compliment uh, magnet, I would say. This is not gonna make Jeremy Fragrance's top 10 complimented fragrances or anything like that, I'll tell you that. Um, but what it what it reminds me of, if you've ever smelled um, Private Label, by Jovoy. This reminds me of a designer take on Private Label. So Private Label came out, I think in 2011, and and um, let me just check. Let's see. Private Label, um, pro 2011, okay? It was 2011, ah. And uh, Cecile Zerokian made that, and it's my favorite perfume by Cecile Zerokian, actually. I like it better than um, Tango from Mask Milano, although I, I like that scent. Uh, I definitely like it better than Ani. And so, uh, but but uh, the one that I have yet to get my nose on from Cecile Zerokian is Epic Woman. I really want to get Epic Woman, uh, a vintage bottle, but they're hard to find. I don't want to pay out the nose. Okay, back to Homage à l'Homme Voyager. So um, I would recommend, if you have the disposable income, to go for private label. However, Jonathan bought this on my recommendation. Uh, you'll see his name plastered all over my, you know, comments, and and he's become a very good friend in the fragrance community. I would say, he bought this after I made that video on it, and he reported back that he really likes it. Uh, Papyrus apparently is one of his favorite notes, but he bought it and said yes, it's it's a thumbs up. Uh, but just be aware, it is also a very austere fragrance to me. It's very, it's very serious. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is something that, you know, I think of somebody like, you know, uh, the Undertaker wearing this or, you know, 
um, somebody who it has a dark side to them, you know, somebody who is um, all business, but uh, maybe they have a little bit of a dark side, um, but uh, they're they're not playful. They're not gonna. They're not warm. Come come give me a hug, buddy. Kind of you know. No, they're you stay over there and I'll stay over here. And um, you know, I'm I'm here in in my position and I'll give you directives on what to do. And you do what I say and make sure they're done by the timeline I give you. That's the kind of fragrance that this uh, that this is. You know, they're 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 a yes sir, uh, no sir kind of guy. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the last Lalique uh, fragrance, and this is one of my um, one of my favorite uh, fougere fragrances that I've come across, especially bang for the buck. Um, but you have to like fougere fragrances. Um, I mentioned the other day in one of my videos that um, uh, I think it was in my Olivier Cresp video that uh, that uh, Bracken Man is is my favorite modern fougere. This would probably come right underneath Bracken Man, which is a very expensive fragrance. This is not a very expensive fragrance, and I'm and I'm shocked that no one talks about this. Well, I'm not shocked, but. You know, this is a fougere. Fougeres are a little bit out of style, but they're starting to make a comeback. Sauvage Elixir has that fougere DNA underneath all of it. So they're starting to make a comeback in modern, you know, mainstream perfumery. And this is a fragrance called Linsaumis. So it has that same beautiful Lalique logo on the top, the sides. And by the way, if you see this type of bottle, like if, you, if you've ever seen... Uh, Ferragamo Uomo with the cap with the built-in sprayer that kind of looks like this. You know what I'm talking about? They are not copying Ferragamo. Ferragamo is using a Lalique bottle to put their liquid inside of. Um, so Lalique, you'd be surprised how many um, bottles Lalique makes. I think they make Creed's bottles. Um, they make a lot of different bottles for, for people. And... Um, but just a beautiful flat cone with the with the black plastic on the sides and the um, top. This is not a built-in sprayer though. This is actually a cap. It's so good. I'm I'm gonna wear the hell out of it. I'm gonna wear the piss out of this in summer. Um, this is basically ba basil in the top with bergamot and rum. So this has a a rum note to it which I really like, a, a, a liquor note you can wear in the summer here, uh, with clary sage, lavender, and black pepper. And the base is patchouli, Haitian vetiver, moss, and clear wood. Now, clear wood is one of those trademarked materials. One of the big firms probably owns it, uh, Givaudan or, or um, you know, um, IFF or something like that. Uh, the perfumer is Fabrice Pellig Pelligran, and um, so this came out in 2006, but what a fougere it is. I mean, as far as fougere fragrances go, if you get the itch to wear a fougere, but you don't want to spend big money, um, you don't want to go buy Roja's Scandal or whatever it is for men, um, get this. I mean, it is a fantastic fougere. It's very modern. You could wear this anywhere. Um, I think this is severely underrated for a fougere. Um, if you're a fougere lover, this also has a Haitian vetiver note, but it's in the base. So all of these I've talked about have that have a vetiver note in them. Um, at least I think the original homage had a vetiver note. No, the original homage does not. So this is the only one that doesn't have a vetiver note. All the rest of the the leaks have have a vetiver note. But for a fougere fragrance. Um, I made a, this is not a top 10 of my favorite fougeres. If you're not sure what a fougere fragrance is and you want to learn more about it, go watch that video and you'll get some of the fougeres in my collection. Uh, but wow, this fragrance is absolutely stunning. Um, again, value for money is through the roof with this fragrance, in my opinion. This is all my opinion, of course, but... Um, that's why I started this channel, to, to share my opinion with you guys, um, and take it or leave it, it will always be my opinion, um, but uh, I hope you get more good than bad out of these videos I'm making. So, 
We're gonna go to a fragrance from the house of Montana now. So, um, Claude Montana um, perfume house. I only have two fragrances from this house, but the last one is an absolute classic, all-time classic. Discontinued, of course. You know I love my vintage discontinued fragrances. This one I think is still available for purchase, and I and I would put this in the same, you know, quality to price ratio as Ancre Noir. Maybe Ancre Noir is a little bit better because it does the note of vetiver just to perfection, um, but this is a fragrance called Graphite, and I actually had a subscriber buy this after they watched my cheapy video list that I did, and I talked about this fragrance. And uh, they bought it, and they said they got like 100 mLs for 18 bucks, and they went out and bought a second bottle after they've smelled after they smelled it. Um, so this is also done by Nathalie Lorson. Again, as you can see, queen of cheapy fragrances. This is not a cheapy at retail. This is a hundred dollar fragrance at retail. But in the, in the discounters, you can find this for 30 bucks for 100 ml. I think this is 100 ml. Um, what is this? Yeah, yeah, 100, 100 ml. Um, okay, so this fragrance, um, look at the color of the juice. I think you can get a feel for the, for the type of weather you're supposed to wear this in. This is a winter scent normally, but... She freshens her fragrances up in a way I think you could wear. I think this could be a signature scent um, because what she's done, this is 2011. So this is um, 11 years ago she released this. And what she did is she took um, Violet Leaf and mixed it with her patented, and now it's like become patented for her, black pepper, musk, benzoin okay so that black pepper musk benzoin thing is like a dna for her now but this time it's mixed with violet leaf which might put some people off because that gives you an old school it might remind some people of the old days like gray flannel or uh, fahrenheit or stuff like that but i love those fragrances so it doesn't bother me at all uh, but it might bother somebody who's never smelled some of those old fragrances and then there's a cedar leaf and ambergris. There's an ambergris note in this. It's probably not real ambergris, but there's a synthetic ambergris note in here. There's a leathery undertone, and the guyac wood in this fragrance is out of this world. This is an amazing guyac wood fragrance um, with oak moss and sandalwood and frankincense and then geranium to kind of keep everything a little bit clean so it doesn't go dirty. Um, beautiful composition, spicy, you know, again, Fragrantica would probably call it like a woody spicy or something, but as far as value for money goes, absolutely amazing. You can wear this anywhere. You could easily wear this to work. Um, it's, it's very modern. Um, and you know, here's the, um, here's the bottom Emporium Empire of Scent. And you can see right there, EDT, 100 ml, it's engraved into the bottle. And then they have the sticker here as well. Um, so that is the more modern one. Now, let me show you the vintage that I have from this house that is unfortunately discontinued because it's the best fragrance this house has ever done, in my opinion. Um, and it's a fragrance from Montana called Parfum Dome. Parfum Dome. And Parfum Dome, came out in the year 1989, um, 1989, sorry, I won't focus on the bottom for you guys, um, besides the sticker sideways, um, this is a, this is a more modern bottle, I believe, um, I think this is a more modern bottle, but all of the bottles are now discontinued, so it doesn't matter. But I think this is done within the last 10 years or so. Um, and this is a vintage that Anuj sent me. So one day I'll do a comparison, but even the modern, I absolutely love. The vintage, as you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but um, there's the information on the vintage 
Um, so one day I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the vintage with the new formulation, but it looks like it has this, you know, Tower of Babel um, feel to it. Beautiful bottle. Um, I really like the bottle. Even though some people say it's tacky, I don't, I don't care. For me, it's about the juice inside, and it is absolutely beautiful. I think some people compare this to, um, what do they compare it to? Maybe like uh, Havana, Aramis Havana, or something like that. Um, but for me, I would actually take this over Havana. Um, I like the fact that this has this very masculine spiciness with this 80s oak moss and patchouli. There's leather in this fragrance. Um, so I think it's almost like amping up the leather, toning down the tobacco a bit from uh, Havana, and adding this beautiful um, sage and pine uh, with this floral heart. There's citruses at the top. There's old school lavender, cinnamon, um, there's even a rose that tends to make an appearance later on. Uh, there's vanilla, but it's not sweet. Don't think sweet fragrances of the last years that you've smelled, you know, masculines with vanilla. No, this is completely different. Uh, there's a beautiful labdanum note too in here. I love the note of labdanum and it just gives this, you know, this extra, you know, this, this um, resinous, you know, sticky feel for the winter absolutely beautiful um and again for me personally i would take this over havana i love havana uh but i enjoy this even more it is discontinued and it's getting hard to find and all that good stuff but um this is the best fragrance the house of montana ever put out in my personal opinion so this has been my um family portrait between Lalique and Montana. Again, I'm aggregating these together as the houses go on. I've already shown you my big collections of Chanel and Amouage, Guerlain, Roja, Creed, uh, Hermes. So now we're kind of adding some of the houses that I have smaller pieces in together, just so you can get a feel for my whole collection. And then ultimately I will start doing, um, you know, the comparison videos more the um, individual reviews, so I'll just, you know, review a fragrance that I'm, um, I've been wearing for a bit, stuff like that, but uh, right now I'm just kind of giving you guys a broad uh, overview. So, and hopefully by doing this, I can still talk about each one of the fragrances and you can find deals before prices go insane. Um, you know, like for example, this is discontinued. If you buy it now versus waiting a year or two before I do an individual review on it, um, you might save yourself a lot of money because the prices on vintage perfume are going absolutely nuts right now. So get it before, I think I paid 40 bucks for this and, um, you know, I don't think you can find it anywhere near that nowadays. So, you know, um, get it while you can. These type of fragrances, that's why I'm doing these videos. I hope they help. I hope it kind of sheds a light on, um, my collection, what I've gone for, you know, stuff like that. So I really appreciate everyone's feedback and watching. We're almost at 600 subscribers, which uh, is a big blessing. I, I I don't count my success on subscriber marks. I'm not doing it for subscribers. I'm definitely not doing it to become YouTube famous or anything um, or to make money on ads. Although if they are going to pay me on ads, I won't say no to it, but I'm not here for that. I'm here for the you know, love of fragrances and to share that knowledge with you guys. And so don't hesitate to write me questions in the comments. I try to respond to every single comment. Sometimes YouTube doesn't let me know if you, you know, write the same message again beneath mine, you know, with another question. It'll take me some time to find it sometimes because it doesn't alert me. But um, if um, I will try to respond to every single comment. And um, I've said this before, but I learn more from you guys than you do from me. So uh, I love the interaction. I love seeing your faces down below. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.